Hi, I'm Sean Dahlquist. I'm at Waters West Fly Fishing and today I'm going to be tying Sid Glasso's Salduck Spay, this fly right here. Um, this fly was developed by Sid in the late 50s, early 60s for steelhead out here on the Olympic Peninsula. Uh, it's a great winter fly uh, and a summer fly as well. Uh, so this fly uses schlop and feathers for the uh, spay hackle on it, dyed yellow, and hackle tip wings. Um, yeah, it's just a great little fly. Um, I'm not going to tie it exactly how Sid did. There's a few things that I do that I don't think he ever did. I've got to examine a few of his flies. Um, so I'll tell you some of the things that I do a little bit differently, but I'm going to try to keep it pretty close to uh, the way he tied it. So the hook I'm using is a uh, blue heron hook. Uh, this is a size 2. This fly is, uh, looks great on uh, the smaller size 2, size 3, and some of the even smaller Alec Jackson size hooks for summer fish. It's a, it looks great. Um, so first of all, the thread color I'm using here is just white. You know, my thread started. And the reason I do that is because the back half of the fly is going to be uh, a yellow, uh, kind of a golden yellow. And with the white thread, uh, helps the back end of the fly really glow. If you use a darker thread, it kind of dulls the floss. So, one of the things I do on this pattern that I don't think Sid ever did was wrap a flat silver tinsel underbody. And this is a small or fine. Uh, flat silver tinsel, and so I just wrap that down just about to the point and then I start coming back up and I usually do about five or six wraps back up and then just to save time and material I don't usually you can wrap it all the way back up and tie it off but I just flatten my thread and wrap back catch it. And as long as you keep your thread flat, it's not going to make too, mu too much of a uh, lumpy area for the floss to wrap over top of. You really can't tell. Okay. Now for the ribs, I'm going to use another piece of flat silver tinsel, this time uh, a little wider, and some oval silver. I like to tie them in at once with the oval on the bottom and the flat on the top. A 
kind of on the far side of the shank. And then I wrap a couple of times just to secure them. And then it's time to tie in the spay hackle, which is schloppen. And I tie it with one side stripped, leaving the these bottom fibers, one side full, one side stripped. And I put it right on top. And then just make sure when you're wrapping to keep the hackle stem on top and your butt ends of your tinsels on the bottom. And I just kind of pinch that and rock my fingers back and forth just to make sure that they stay in place. Otherwise it's going to show through your floss body. So about there, is where I'll tie in the floss for the rear half of the body. Um, well, one of the things that I've noticed uh, in all of fly tying books, and anytime this pattern is mentioned, is it's typically mentioned as having a uh, fluorescent orange rear half and then a fluorescent orange uh, a remainder in uh, seal fur but from everything that I've seen of Sid's actual tying of this fly it was uh, closer to a yellow or a gold yellow half of the body which makes a nice contrast with the, the rear half being yellow and the remainder being orange Flies like uh, this, just the saw duck, which is more of a wet fly, and this pattern, he typically tied it with a, more of a yellowish body, and this Lagerton, uh, they call it marigold yellow, is almost perfect for doing that. Um, floss I'm using here is, is an antique spool, um, and it's... Uh, I've, I've heard it called arc yellow it's um, it's it's yet more of a yellow orange um, it's just about perfect so loop that in and on this we'll go down and back just trying to keep it flat, nice and smooth. But I've tied this pattern with, I'm going to finish it with uh, a wine colored thread. And I've tied this many times just using the wine thread the whole way through and when it when the fly is wet it the the wine thread underbody it really dulls this uh, floss so that's why I like to use the the tinsel under it and then the white thread over top and it keeps the the rear half of this fly really glowing
So I'm just keeping my butt ends of everything right there all the same length so that when I wrap up there's no real lumps or anything to 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 hinder it. All right. So now I'm just going to put a couple half hitches in and switch my threads out. Okay. So for the remainder of the fly, I'm going to use uh, some seal fur. Um, you can use SLF or Angora or any sort of synthetic or even, you know, rabbit. Just any, any sort of fur will work. Um, and when I tie this fly, I... I used to tie it with a, a floss dubbing loop, but now I just dub it right onto my thread. I believe Sid would split his silk, insert the dubbing, twist it, and wrap it up, which is really a cool technique, but I'm just going to dub it right onto the thread. You can always add more takeoff. Okay, so you want to leave enough room, you can tie a nice little head, just like Sid used to do. Okay, so now we'll wrap our flat silver, and I like to hit the third wrap of tinsel right at the, right where the floss and the dubbing meet. That's what I try to shoot for. and five turns. You can rock this back and forth and break it off if you're worried about dulling your scissors. I'm not. And then the oval butted right up behind it. Try to catch your materials on the side of the hook, not in between where the where the return is. Okay, and then follow the schloppen right behind the oval. And it's going to look kind of wild while you're doing it. 
but it trains back really nicely. Catch it alongside. And then just pinch it down. that and then for the collar uh, Sid used dyed black hair and feathers um, I'm going to use uh, ring neck pheasant rump feather dyed black and just a few turns So when I'm tying collars on these flies, uh, one of the important things to consider is you don't want to create a bunch of bulk up here because it'll kick the wing up and you want the wing to sit nice and low. So I tie this on the far side, right alongside. That way, when I start wrapping it, there's more stem and fibers on the underside than on the top. And that will just help with your wing set. You can do one and a half, two and a half turns. You can just pinch it back. Wet it a little bit if you have to. Okay, and for the wing, I'm just using uh, rooster neck hackles, dyed hot orange. And you want to take them from uh, either side here, uh, from the two from the left and two from the right. That way they curve nicely over the body. And I tie them all in at once. So here's here's my side, right there, and then two for the other side. Match them up. 
and you can you can put a little hump in these with your nail just to try to help them set over that and I stick the butt ends through the eye and I want to get a little bit of the actual hackle fibers trapped in there that just helps it sit a little more securely And that doesn't always sit right the first time. Sometimes you got to go back and and do it again. It just takes practice. And so now you can either take these butt ends and pull them back under the hook and lash them down for extra strength and durability. I'm just gonna hold on to the. hold on to the wing and pop them back up. And then flatten your thread out. And wet finish. And that's the Saldex Bay.